Hi everyone, welcome again to my channel Code with D. In this video, we will see how to use DES algorithm and its different kind of modes and paddings in the Java program. So let's start the code. For the encryption, we will use Java security module, which is available by default in Java library. I have already added videos in my channel to understand the modes and padding schemes. If you haven't gone through those videos, please do it now. It will help you to understand the different behavior with the different modes and padding schemes. To start with, we have defined one test case. Here, we have defined a value to encrypt. And this value to encrypt, we will pass to the encrypt method that we still need to implement. This method will return the cipher text. And when passing this cipher text to the decrypt method, it will return us the original value. And we have defined our assertion that the original value is equal to the value after decryption of the encrypted text. For any encryption, we need to define a key. So we are defining our constructor that is taking the key string. For the DES algorithm, the key length has to be 64 bits, that is 8 byte. So we need to pass on this string of length 8 and now we will define the key uh, for defining the key we will use the java security module constructor takes two parameters one is the byte so we will convert our string to the byte another thing is the algorithm so in our case we are using the des algorithm so we have defined the algo constant so just pass it here Actually, the key is the interface, so we need the implementation, which is secret key spec. That is what we are using here. So this is our key. Let's define the encrypt method now. Encrypt method takes the string, that is value to encrypt. Now we need to generate the cipher instance. The cipher object is responsible for any encryption and the decryption. The get instance method takes a string as an argument which is the transformation string that has a form of the algorithm, the mode and the padding schemes. We will define our transformation. So it is the algorithm slash the mode slash the padding. We have got the instance now. So we will initialize it with the action that it has to take. For this, we will use the init method. In the init method, we need to pass the mode for the encryption, the mode will be the encrypt mode. Similarly, for the decryption, it will be decrypt mode. Along with this mode, we need to pass the key. This is a 64-bit key, which we have already instantiated. The init method throws the exception, but we are not bothered about what kind of exception it throws. So instead of throwing the specific exception, we will just throw the generic exception. Now we need to take the final action that is to encrypt the data. For that, we will use the two final method. This method takes the byte. So we need to convert the value to encrypt to the byte. This method returns the array of byte, but that won't be a useful information for the end user. So instead of returning the bytes, we will convert this byte to the string by using the base64 encoder. And eventually, this method will return the encoded string of the ciphertext. So this is our encrypt method. Similarly, we need to define the decrypt method. So for the decryption, we need a encrypted value. And we will use the same cipher instance, same transformation. Only difference would be the mode of the init method. So in our case, we will use the decrypt mode. For the DES algorithm, the key will be shared, so we will use the same key. Finally, the do final method. Now, as we have used the encoded value of the encrypted bytes, we need to get back the decoded value first. So we will use the base 64.get decoder and decode the encrypted value. Again, this method returns the bytes, so we will convert that to the string by using new string. And this method finally will return our original text back. First scenario we have is with the mode ECB and the no padding scheme. If we just go back to our test and run the test with the value to encrypt bridges spun. 
so this test fails and it says no such algorithm exception ah okay so we have defined our transformation object wrong we have missed one slash before the padding let's add that and now we will rerun it it is again failing with the illegal block size exception and it says input length not multiple of 8 bytes so we have used no padding scheme as our input is not a multiple of 8 bytes so using the no padding scheme we won't be able to encrypt the data so if we just reduce our text to 8 bytes that is bridges p and run the test so it works perfectly fine but our original expectation is to use the encryption for any number of bytes so we need to change the algorithm and we will now use the padding scheme pkcs5 padding with this change if we run our test so this is working perfectly fine right similarly we can change different modes so instead of ecb mode let's use the other mode which is cbc mode and if we run our test with this cbc mode the test is again failing and now we have the error invalid key exception parameter missing so for the cbc we need the initialization vector that means without initialization vector we won't be able to encrypt the initialization vector can be passed to the init method now along with the encrypt mode and the key we will pass the iv parameters back this iv vector is the byte so for des algorithm it has to be 8 byte for that we can use the secure random from the java library and secure random dot engine generated seed will return the bytes of the length provided in the parameter so here we are passing 8 in the parameter so it will return the iv bytes which is the array of 8 bytes that is what we are going to use in the both encrypt and decrypt method for the iv parameter and if we now run test so it looks perfectly fine this was with the pkcs5 padding mode and if we change the mode to no padding again it fails and the same region uh, input length is not multiple of 8 byte this is because we both ecb and cbc mode work with the block cipher if we change the mode to cfd with no padding it works perfectly fine Same is the scenario with the OFB mode and by changing the mode to OFB we, we are still using the no padding and if we run our test so it is running perfectly fine. O CFB and OFB mode works with the stream cipher that is it will encrypt and decrypt the data bit by bit so there is no additional padding required. All of these behavior with the modes and padding we have already covered in our previous video. So we are not deep diving into. We have used the IV value except for the ESP mode. The purpose of IV value is to have a random encryption all the time. But now if we just try to encrypt the value once and do the encryption again for the same value and let's see if we have the values equal or not. We have applied the asset not equal so we are expecting that value has to be different but in reality those values are same the reason behind this is that we have used the same iv value for the encryption every time so if we apply the new iv every time whenever we are calling the encrypt method it should return the different iv all the time for generating the different bytes now we will use the next byte method of the secure random so for that we can simply use the secure random dot next bytes and we will pass the iv bytes array so every time whenever next byte will be called it will update the iv bytes and same thing we can use in the decrypt method With this change, if we run our test now, so it is failing, but if we look at the failure region, it is different. 
so encrypted values are different for sure but the value after decryption is not the same as the value for the encryption that we have used the reason behind this is the iv vector because we are using the different iv values for the encryption and the decryption so it is resulting into the wrong values for the cbc mode the wrong iv value only impacts the first block so if you see here the expected and the actual block has the last character same but the initial values are different so if we add the random block in the value to encrypt and run our test so you see we have the final characters are same but initials are different we can make use of this fact in our encrypt method if we add a random block in the encrypt method and while decrypting we just remove the random block in that case we will get the different encrypt values but eventually the decryption would be correct okay so let's do that so here in the encrypt method along with the value to encrypt we will add one random block so we will use this string dot format to combine the random value plus the value to encrypt this encrypt method will return the encrypted value of the combined result of the two strings so at the time of decryption we would need to remove the random block first block is the random block so we will remove the first eight bytes and then if we run our test so test is working perfectly fine to be sure of our logic let's add couple of more assertions and if we run our test so it is failing this is because of the fact that we are generating the bytes using the next bytes and because of this the length of the the encrypted and the decrypted text is different so we cannot use the fixed length substring to fix this behavior what we can do is we can define our own method that returns the random bytes for that we will define method get random bytes it has a length parameter which is int so we will return the byte of the given length for generating the bytes we will use our own care sets so we have selected the alphanumeric characters plus some special characters we will define one string builder and we will build our string of given length and eventually we will return the get bytes we will build our string using the different characters from our care set by iterating through the length given in the parameters and we will append the characters from our care sets to get the random care we will use the secure random next int that will give us a index from the care sets so we will pick the character from the care sets so we will now use this method in our encrypt and decrypt method and if we run our test so it is returning the results successfully i have used this method for the demonstration purpose but in production application you should be using your get random bytes very carefully right. so this was about the implementation of encryption and decryption we also observed different kind of behaviors when using different modes and padding schemes if you have any question or any doubt please leave them in the comment box below until then, happy coding.